Hey guys, it's Carlos. My channel is Scarlet and Sable. Scrub up, dig in, let's get started. Today we're going to start a new series. Um, thinking maybe I might do more than one of these. It's called Shit No One Asked For. Uh, title kind of says it all. So uh, there's a very vocal minority of supporters, the uh, four or five people who still watch these. And I do appreciate you guys, don't get me wrong. I always enjoy reading your comments. I think I might have picked up a, a hater, finally. Finally, success. But the best way for you to uh, show support and help is to, you know, tell your other modeling buddies, male or female, uh, you know, human, non-human, whatever. Let them know. Get them to subscribe. Log on to their account. Subscribe for them. Don't do that. Uh, yeah, and tell them, hey, man, check this out. If you like it, maybe they will, too. I don't know. Anyhow, so what I did and what I want to do is I kind of have been reviewing some of my processes. And I was, uh, while I was in... Um, I was on a training trip not too long ago, and I started watching uh, Peyton Plastic on Lincoln Wright's channel. He's hugely successful, so I don't need to give him any heat. But he's a good guy, and he's real big on the aerosols. He's been, you know, he's kind of been formed by his uh, career in Japan, and he was a model over there. So that's kind of one of the ways that he prefers to do business. And I, uh, you know, there were times when I was just like, you know, why? <laughs> Who in their right mind would use an aerosol when they could just, you know, use an airbrush? And there's, you can't argue with the quality of the airbrush finish. I'm not going to be that guy to argue with the quality of the airbrush finish. It's always going to be better. You have more control. You're just spewing less material. Now, when it comes to smaller models, you, you don't really need a big airbrush. If you had, if you were doing like a, a bigger, like a giant, I don't know, a ship model, like a one one two hundred. uh you know, USS uh, Iowa class, you're going to need a bigger than what I'm using here. I'm using a Badger Sotar, and I'm spraying Mr. Surfacer at approximately 20 PSI from a couple few inches away. So, you know, hopefully that's, that's pretty obvious. And it just lays down real smooth. I even go a little bit heavy, and there's, I mean, I, if, if, all things being equal in a perfect world if I had a spray booth that was set up in a, you know a room and I, I actually wanted to bore through the walls and just throw the uh, throw the tubes against it and just had it ready to go all the time yeah there's there's this is an absolutely superior finish I would not argue that however getting back to our other point about Lincoln's channel and what the way he does business he likes to use the aerosol and you know I've been finding more and more that I like I think sometimes I've been overthinking it and I just kind of need to get back to get back to basics. There's definitely better ways of doing things, but there's also ways of doing things that you can finish models, be super happy about it, and then move on to the next model or I don't know, whatever. I mean, you could see that later in the video when I work on this guy, you know, I kind of, not this guy in particular, but one of the guys that I painted with the spray can, I come back to him and you can always adjust it. I mean, this is a bit of a slower burn of a hobby. So there's going to be a little bit, You, I mean, you're investing your soul into these things, man. So there's care, there's love. And if something takes a little bit longer, not too big a deal. The reason why this is so awesome is because I'm out in the garage right now. I'm just, I'm, when I'm not filming, I'm actually twirling in a circle and just spraying the spray can. Oh, look at that. I'm spraying the spray can just everywhere. That's all I'm doing. I'm not really doing that. The point is, is that there's no there's no worry of fumes or whatever in the garage I can go out into the garage and I can blast away I put on my mask and then take it off and walk back inside and I don't have to air out my room I don't have to you know get the spray booth uh, up and running and there are times when I'm gonna want to airbrush and like I said perfect world best case scenario airbrushing absolutely superior finish but this is like pretty much we're like 90 percent of the way there so um, I think that it's it's probably a good thing to try different ways of doing things and one of the things that it's easy to do 
and I try to avoid is like you kind of get set in your ways and you think that uh, this is finally this is it I have arrived I'm never going to change the way that I do business I think that one of the ways that you can continue to grow is by experimenting and kind of testing out those theories now you don't have to buy a ton of products I'm doing that for you I'm doing the hard work I'm busting through the lines I'm getting out there um, you know I'm, I'm putting on my mask and I'm going to O'Reilly's and I'm, I'm buying the paint for you so we're we're gonna get to the bottom of this I think in this video and I think that you'll see toward the end I mean I'm not gonna try to convert anybody but like I was surprised and pleased by the results that I've been getting and, it, and even though I don't use one of the products here I do show another product that I bought uh, that I have been using and I'm totally satisfied with so I think that I think that this is probably going to be the way that I'm going to do business from now on. And in the winter, when it's too cold to do the aerosols, you can warm them up inside. Um, but that's kind of like, you know, research that before you do that. I've heard you can put them into a tub of water to warm them up, and then you can go out and spray them just fine. But also, I saw somebody blew up a can of Rust-Oleum on Facebook. So uh, once again, guys, I'm not an expert. I'm not a an aerosol or paint scientist. So I'm just I'm some dumb dumb on the internet. Please do your research, do your homework, see if what I'm saying makes okay, sense. Or... We're done spraying. We're back inside. Uh, I've done a little bit of prep for this portion, so we'll kind of do a review of the materials we use, and then we'll talk about the outcomes. So this one is a darker gray, the duple color automotive series sandable primer. This actually has a very, very nice finish. I really like it. I'm still researching whether or not this is actually what would be considered a lacquer paint. I have uh, noticed that it just like sticks on the surface real hard, very hard to get off. Like I've, I've scrubbed it pretty good with my fingernail and uh, yeah. Um, this is what I got a little bit earlier today. This is when I bought, I watched a video on uh, called Scale Model Workshop, and the guy said, well, you know, make sure that you get the correct primer. Make sure you get the primer with the 30-minute, um, uh, you know, cure time or touch time. Like, you can touch it in 30 minutes and that it's sandable. So when I was looking at the MSDSs and stuff, I was like, well, well okay, I mean, I'm, I'm, honestly, I, don't, I couldn't tell you. I'm still trying to find out what makes a lacquer and what makes an enamel. This paint, the sandable, has more, let me zoom out, has more uh, what would be called like hydrocarbons in it. So I think it's actually more of an enamel, but I'm trying to find out. So... This guy is most definitely a lacquer. It reeks. I can still smell these little guys. Um, oh, he wasn't painted with that. These little guys, and I can still smell them. This stuff stinks. So you got to make sure that you do it outside. One of the ingredients, it's not on the back, but it, it has like talc or something in it. So it, it makes, um, it kind of, it acts as a filler, which is really, I mean, that's kind of why it's nice because you can sand it and then you can, you know, fill scratches and come back and sand them. So anyhow, I'll start showing off some of the finishes here. So you can see, we'll get in real close. So this is done with the, that Duplicolor filler primer. And I believe you can see there's some texture there. It's not, it's not a lot, but it's a little bit, and I can feel it with my finger. So... You know, I mean, if uh, the whole point of this was kind of like trying to get to the bottom of can you can you get by during a pandemic with what you can find at like Pep Boys or O'Reilly's? I got mine at O'Reilly's. And I think the answer is kind of yes. You, you have to be willing to compromise. Like if I was going to go for an ultra, ultra uh, nice finish, which I, I never have because I don't really work on models that uh, need that kind of stuff. But I don't know if I would start from here. Or if I did, I would probably uh, do this on... See, the thing is, is that because of the of the material that's inside of it, when you're spraying it onto a model that doesn't have a ton of flat surfaces and has corners to get into, what can happen... Is this the guy? I don't know if you can see it, but it kind of builds up in the corners there. So, not the end of the world, but like if you're going for like, you know, like a pristine, super high gloss finish, 
you know, that's going to be a problem. And that's that material in the primer because with the stuff that hits the front is still wet. It's hitting the front. It's not drying. It's spreading out. It's, it's flowing onto the model. But then as you blast past that and you have like some reflected dust, you know, the, the, it's called dusting or overspray. That overspray kind of like makes those really grainy flecks. I, the, I've never used this stuff. So today I was like, oh, okay. So this is the stuff I should be using. Here you can see, I didn't go too hard, but you can definitely see. Can you see? You can, I don't know if you can see. Can you see? Okay. Oh, say, can, um, there's, there was a lot of scratches on the side on this particular portion and over here, but I'm not, you know, they're not as noticeable. And I have another kind of demo item to show. And I wasn't even going to show off that other primer, the sandable stuff, but because of the quality of the finish and just because of the confusion that I've been going through trying to figure out if it's actually a lacquer and sandable. I mean, this is still sandable. I sanded it, but everybody seems to, you know, thinks that lacquers are the best. So, uh, I'm going to keep showing off these guys that I did with this color. So this guy, okay, so here, here's, we've got these two guys and here's where we have a little bit of our problem. So just so you know, this is the same day. This stuff hasn't cured yet. So I, I tried a little fingernail test on one of them. Uh, not one of these guys, one of my little barbarian guys. I did a little fingernail test and, uh, you know, the paint's still a little bit soft. So I'm going to, I'm going to give it a, f a couple days, maybe two, three days to make sure that it's, uh, to see just how hard it, it can get because this gray stuff this stuff uh you can you can try to burnish it and you can even try to scrape it with your fingernail and you just can't get it off and it's got such a nice tight finish that even if it's enamel i think i might continue to use it because it's durable it's real durable anyhow continuing on pressing on uh, the only problem, okay, so here's the problem. This guy did a couple coats on, and I'll, I'll, I'll show it to you for a second, and then I'll see if you can notice it. And then I'll bring over one of my control guys. Okay, so this guy I did with a Mr. Surfacer product, one of these. But I actually used Mr. Surfacer 1200 on that one, and it's beautiful. There's no, there's no arguing with that finish. I mean, that's a perfect uh, covering. I don't know how well it fills. I mean... This guy must have had some scrapes on his boots. They all did a little bit. So I don't know. If, let's see if you can see it. It looks like it might have filled those scratches. You might you might be able to see them up there. This this area in particular on these models had a mold line, so it's problematic. I was scraping it with an X-Acto, and that's kind of... There's probably a better way to do that, and uh, I need to find it. But anyhow, um, so it did fill those, and this is the 1200, which is one step down from the highest... Uh, level which is the finishing surfacer and these all have some kind of stuff in them to fill so they're all fillers they're also the surfacer actually is a type of you know that's like a an actual industry term uh as far as primers go but yeah this 1200 is a beautiful finish and this stuff is not i wouldn't say it's like super expensive but like obviously if we're in the middle of a pandemic and you can't necessarily get places but we still have some availability you know i'm looking at alternatives and also, I kind of, I'll talk about it, uh, or I should have talked about it earlier, because this is supposed to be a segment further along, but um, I've kind of been enjoying spraying outside, and I don't have to worry about cleaning up inside, and I don't have to worry about, uh, you know, just fumes and all that stuff. So you can see, that is just such a clean finish. So I might as well show my 1000. I used two different Mr. Surfacers. This Mr. Surfacer is pretty watered down. I don't know if you can see in some areas, you can see it's flown, flowed into the recesses and it kind of didn't quite grab everything, but it's still a very nice finish. Very, and this is actually a lower, like a lower grade. So this is, if you wanted to fill heavier scratches than the 1200 and uh, heavier, you know, the 1200 is, if you don't want to quite go to the 1500 1500 i think is almost like a paint but it's still considered a surfacer so who knows how many solids it has in it i really like this 1200 finishes you know let's let's admi <laughs> let's admire the quality of this 1200 finish shall we okay back to this guy so here's the problem okay when you compare them with the 1200 guy uh let's see no yeah okay so look at his shoulder see how crispy those details still are see how you can see those recesses perfectly now look at this dude's knee. A little soft. 
a little soft. And the reason why I think is because I had missed or there were just some areas that hadn't quite gotten, uh, you know, there was like a little paleness here, a little paleness there. And I kind of was going overboard on purpose to see like what is going to happen. And in, in all other places, I'd say that it's totally satisfactory. So I wasn't super thrilled with this. And this is actually worse. It's dried a little bit. I don't think that's going to, it's pretty much, it's, it's uh, shrunk about as much as it's going to shrink. So the only thing it has left to do is just cure and degas. These things, again, they stink a little bit. But all in all, I still, I really like that finish. Is it is it as good as the 1200 finish? No. But is it available at the gas, or not the gas station, but is it available in town? Yes, it is. So if I run into trouble, you know, I know where to go. And that was, you know, that's, I don't know. I, okay. All right. I'm a hoarder. Okay. I'm a hoarder. I just like to think that I'm planning ahead. I think I'm wise. All right, never mind. So I'm going to try something. We'll do it. This is a, a world exclusive. Air horn. Cue the air horn. So this is something I actually saw on Luke's channel. Um, paint on plastic. Luke? Not Luke. Lincoln. Oh, boy. Lincoln. So I'm going to put on my mask and then I'll, uh, all I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little bit of the Mr. Leveling thinner and then I'm going to try to kind of wipe away a little bit of that lacquer. So I need to put on my mask and I'll do that and then there will be a voiceover to tell you what I'm doing. All right. So uh, unfortunately for this part, you will need a hobby grade thinner. You're either going to need like a Tamiya lacquer or that Mr. Color. Reason being, it's a little bit gentler than your typical hardware store lacquer. So bear that in mind if you're going to go back and touch this up. Uh, one of the reasons is that it doesn't have the aggressive chemicals like MEK or xylene. And what I'm doing is, is I'm getting a tiny bit of uh, moisture, a little bit of lacquer thinner on the brush, not too much. There I get too much and you can see it run. You just want a little bit because you want to stimulate that lacquer, kind of get it, uh, get it uh, dissolved. The lacquer thinner is a solvent for itself, so you need to get in there again and reactivate it and kind of take a wick a little bit of it away. That's all I'm trying to do. I get a little bit too much into there, and so you can see that it's not quite um, what I wanted, which was to just bring out that detail. I take a little bit too much away, but other than that, totally fine, and I could, as I say later, I can touch it up. So this is all that there is to it. It's very pungent, very stinky. So just remember, put your mask on and uh, have fun. Okie dokie. So it didn't quite go the way we thought it was going to go. But on the other hand, you know, no, no real big problems. Uh, there's still primer covering it. If you wanted a uniform coat, you could go back in with 1,000. But... Um, you know, lacquers are very temperamental, um, and they take experience, and I'm pretty much a neophyte at the lacquer game. I mean, I'm satisfied with that. I could, I could probably touch it up with the 1000 or the 1200, and I'd be fine. And, I mean, at that point, you're kind of like, well, what's the point of having, um, uh, you know, the, the can outside? I, I don't know. For me, I, since I have my area set up and I also have, I have the can now, I think I would do the majority of my, of my, uh, preliminary work with this thing because it just it puts out a ton of paint and if you're painting um an army for example and you had something like this or something like this you know you can do a bunch of guys all at once so it's actually i don't know if it's more efficient but it, i just find it easier right now especially at this time of year i can go out into the garage and uh, i don't have to worry about you know just hosing these guys down inside and yeah, the touch up, I'd have to get a little more lacquer paint out, but like that's such a small amount. I just need a couple drops, touch it up, turn on the booth and then, you know, maybe get a Q-tip and run a little bit of lacquer thinner as opposed to filling up the entire room of fumes and having to wait, you know, 30 or 45 minutes for it to air out. That's one of the reasons I've been so uh, interested in the watercolors because they like when the lights are off and... Uh, you know, it's late at night. I have, you know, little people that go to bed early. And so they're silent. They don't stink. They don't smell like anything. And they're 
They, you know, I've been working on trying to get some different effects, but we're not really talking about that, are we? So anyhow, um, I, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with how that looks. Initially, I was like, mm, I wasn't in love with it, but now that I'm looking at it under the lights, I mean, I can still see all the detail, and this guy, I didn't go real heavy on this guy, and this guy turned out just fine for me. Uh, on the side, you can see there's a little bit of that, uh, that buildup I was talking about, and, you know, if you went back in with a little bit of thinner and kind of tamp that down or if you had a sponge a, a sanding sponge that was small enough or like a little sanding stick you could get in there those are all things you could do i'd probably just leave it alone um but that's just me so i mean it's up to you obviously this 1200 beautiful needs an airbrush has to be inside or well actually preferably outside with a ton of ventilation or a nice booth or you can do this outside which i kind of like uh, I have a, you know, a garage that I do it in. So anyhow, that was, that was awesome. And here's, this wasn't initially about this, but this primer, I mean, this primer is tremendous. Look at this guy and you can see no detail lost whatsoever. I mean, it's just, it's really good stuff. So I, I might continue to use it even though it's technically not a lacquer. So don't tell anybody, but yeah, very happy with the performance of that particular product. So anyhow, uh, final thing, this ball, initially I was trying to see, because this, this, the gray stuff says it's a filler, a light filler, fills light scratches, and then this is a high build, which fills deep scratches. So uh, I did this before I even owned this, and I was like, I scuffed this ball up all over, and I, I split it in half. I think I have a picture that I'll upload with the video. And you can still see, though, this is actually after three coats. See that? You can still see the scratches. So this is done with, um, I think, 120 grit. I had 120 grit sanding sponge that I did that with, and you you can still see it. It's still fine. You could get a you know 600. That's what they recommend: a 600 grit, sand it down, paint it again. Uh, see what's left, sand it down, paint it again. And but this is one this is one shot with the uh, with this stuff. So if you had a model that had a bunch of scratches in it or whatever. Now there's still, I don't know if you can see it, but there's still scratches in there, but it's like, it's almost imperceptible. And this can be sanded after an hour. So you wet sand this down with like six, let me verify that claim, done wet or dry after 30 minutes. I'll tell you what guys, this is quality content. Not only do you get to see paint dry, but you get to read the back of a paint can with me. So yeah, I'm pretty sure it's going to explode. Anyhow, <laughs> there's... There's almost imperceptible scratches, so you can sand it down and then do it again. So this stuff, pretty good. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Uh, Mr. Color 1200 is awesome, but we already knew that. Uh, or Mr. Mr. Surfacer 1200 is amazing. Mr. Surfacer 1000 just as good. Uh, in a pinch, uh, in, in a pandemic, if you will, if that, you know, maybe that might happen. And not to make light of it, I hope nobody is, you know, nobody's uh, people are affected by that and um yeah it's serious i i recognize that so please don't please don't mistake my attempt at levity anyhow uh it's totally decent i could totally live with this still a lot of detail a little bit of dust in the corners but yeah there's ways to there's ways to deal with that you guys know you guys know what to do with that i'm i'm preaching to the choir anyhow uh oh final test okay so i wanted to show you guys how durable this stuff is i'm gonna try to scratch it i'm gonna go real hard I mean, you can hear it, right? And it didn't, I mean, it's coming through, but that's about, that's the hardest I've scratched. That's with my thumb, and it's still not coming up. You can see a little bit of daylight right there. That's hard, man. So this stuff, it's the bee's knees. I still have to let the, the gray stuff cure, so let's just try over here in the corner. Hmm? It's pretty tough. I'm giving it, I'm giving it the, I'm giving it... I'm giving it everything, Captain. So yeah, I'm I'm working it with my thumb real hard. You can see those gouges. There we go. Okay. So I got a little gouge right there. But yeah, this stuff is tough, man. This is way tougher than any acrylic I've ever used. All right, man. Thanks for checking in. Good luck out there, guys. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Turn the music off.
What's up, guys? Uh, I'd like to say that this has been a long process over the last few days, but I think the more I learn, the less I realize that I know available conclusions. So, when we talk about primers, there is no doubt in my mind that the Mr. Surfacer out of the bottle is by far the best. There's, so I won't even bother comparing them. They're all fine. They're all satisfactory. But one of the things that I wanted to do is, is figure out, you know, is this valuable? Can I add this to my process? Is this valuable for other people? I mean, I don't know. I have these burning questions. I'm reevaluating my methods. And the short answer is this is the best. Uh, the reason why is because you can look at the finish. It's flawless. It's beautiful. Like, literally nothing wrong with it. Um, I mean, it's like, it's so pretty, you could just leave it that way. The reason why this is superior, there is, uh, and I'll go into that when I start talking about the primers, but with lacquer, you have your uh, time for it to dry, and then there's going to be time for it to cure, and then there's something called a recoat time. Lacquer has no recoat time. Also, when you're coming out of the can, when you're coming or out of the bottle, when you're spraying your Mr. Surfacer, and again, I'm using the wrong, I'm using the wrong bottle, but I think you know what I'm saying. When you're using the Mr. Surfacer out of the bottle, you don't have any propellants. There is no propellant in here. There's just solvent and the primer material. Therefore, when it's time for this thing to cure, once it dries, it's pretty much done. Now you can give it overnight to let it kind of like really set up. But you don't have to wait for it to quote unquote degas and you could recode it. And that's true, I guess, of all lacquers. And I learned that on the Duplicolor website. So when we talk about the cans, so here's one of the things that when I was out and about, I found this can of color line. And this is one of the cans that appears in the scale model workshop video. And I was like, well, heck, I'm going to get some. And also, I had this and I was like, well, let's go hard. Let's get really, let's go into it. I, I even wanted to get some 3M primer from uh, Ace Hardware, but uh, sadly they were out. The guy told me they had it, but when I went, it wasn't even closed. So yeah, thanks, Brad. Anyhow, uh, one of the things, so I thought, according to the video, this is a lacquer-based paint. This is lacquer and this is lacquer. However, as we talked about, the difference between lacquer and I found out later the difference between lacquer and enamel is enamel has a recoat time, lacquer doesn't. And I don't know, uh, in, uh, you know, without a shadow of a doubt that this is enamel, but this does have a 48 hour recoat time. So it says you can apply it within two hours or you have to wait 48 hours for it to be able to recoat. The reason why is because if you apply it again, you could get lift, which is, you know, you spray the paint over it, the solvent kind of activates the paint beneath, the paint beneath is still curing, it's degassing, and then it's going to kind of lift off the surface. So that's why if this is enamel, you have to either do it right after you spray it or it starts to skin over and then you have to wait until it completely cures and go back and reapply it. So, Obviously, that's pretty terrible if you're impatient like I am. Not only that, this can, it sucks. So I'm, I'm not going to buy this again, and I'm never going to use this product again. If you look at that tip, that's like that's a, that's a 19, 1980, 1990 Krylon tip. It's terrible. It's very stiff. I've, it actually triggered my uh, carpal tunnel <laughs> just using it a little bit the other day. All right, so... The, where it starts to get a little hazy is when I began researching and after I watched the video again, I had actually bought, this is not quite the right primer. That's why I went and got the filler. And uh, according to the video, he said that, well, this is actually just a solvent-based paint, whereas this is actually a primer. I don't know the truth. This does have solids in it. It has like talc in it as well as the filler. It just doesn't have as much or it's not as uh, thick. So I still I still don't know whether or not this is actually what would be considered a primer when you apply when you apply it on the surface it does kind of give you like a little bit of a it gives you a matte textured surface and uh, it doesn't necessarily fill as much I don't know I think I I really like the finish I I think it's I thought it was enamel but I I think it's lacquer because it has no recoat time this has no recoat time. And this has no recoat time. So again, what that means is, is you could spray it, you wait for it to dry, you sand it, and then you can go back in with it. You don't have to wait 
uh, 48 hours if you don't hit it in that window before it skins over. So really, I mean, there's not, there, there's no, there's no reason to not use this unless you have the issues that I have, which is maybe you don't necessarily want to spray it inside. Now I have to say, initially I was a lot higher on this than I am now. <laughs> no pun intended. This stuff reeks. I already mentioned that, but it is actually for me intolerable. I'm very sensitive to solvents and this stuff. I brought some of the stuff in last night and I was kind of looking at it and I was going to clean it up, but it just smells so bad. I couldn't keep it inside. I had to take it outside. I got everything out I, and I was like, what still smells? And I lifted my gloves up to my face. My gloves were covered in the stuff and it was just, it was, uh, I couldn't deal. And I came back in again and I was like, oh my God, it still reeks. And it was, I had my painting handle, which is covered in it. My GW painting handle, I don't have it right now, but it was covered in it. I couldn't even be in the same room as it. So that's really, I mean, for me, that's one of the, I'm starting to kind of like change my thought process again. And <laughs> this is supposed to remove doubt, but once again, we've just introduced more variables. So this, uh, this particular surfacer, I can be in the same room with this and I just I sprayed this a couple hours ago and it's still it has an odor but it's not that bad. I'm still going to give it 24 hours to um cure but so if I had to say this is second, this is third and then or this is third and then this is fourth and then the color line it's just I'm not even going to bother. So this stuff actually doesn't smell as bad as the filler. The ingredients are a little bit different. It has some hydrocarbons in it. One of the reasons I thought that it was an enamel, but I'm not going to bother getting into that. Point is, is that this actually, after about a day, it was about okay. I could, I could tolerate it. The filler primer, two days. It has to sit outside for two days. So I'm putting it inside of a little plastic tub. I'm putting a little red lid on it, kind of like one of these things. And I'm just kind of, I'm cracking a little, little bit. And I'm just going to let the little guys sit in there while they degas. So the big advantage of the of this particular product or the filler, the other duplicolor, is that you can get these on Amazon and you can buy them for uh, you can get a box of six for thirty three, thirty four bucks. This is about ten to twelve dollars wherever you buy it, and it's uh, this is one hundred eighty mils. This is about four hundred mils. So obviously you're getting twice as much at half the price if you bought a box. Now. You know, I would before anybody bought it, you know, I'm not I'm not telling anybody to get it. But for me, I think I probably what I'm going to do is I'm going <laughs> to I'm still going to try some of those other products, but I'm probably going to come back to this. I, I this thing really impressed me. I really liked it. And, uh, you know, if I have like a really special project or I, I love the color of the Mr. Mahogany, if I could find something like this in Duplicolor, I would get it. They have a red oxide, which I'm going to try. But this is like I love this color. Steinle Res. Yeah, why don't I talk about another, uh, but anyway, Steinal Res has a color called Ebony Skin. I might check that out, so we're not doing polyurethane primers. Anyhow, so just to review, lacquer-based primer, this is what you want, uh, no recoat time, you wait till the solvents um, dissolve, uh, or I'm sorry, evaporate, and then you're good to go. You can recoat, you can sand, you can do whatever. Enamel braced primer, I wouldn't bother. And also enamels, if you go to any kind of model car forum, pretty much half the half the posts are about people who used, you know, Uncle Joe's uh, Rust-Oleum can that they found in the shed and then their entire finish was ruined. So I would not bother with enamel based primer. So anyhow, um, you know, I don't know if that's useful for anybody, but it, I, you know, it was interesting for me to research all this stuff. So anyhow... Thanks for uh, checking in, guys. That was Shit No One Asked For, Volume 1.